Slowly but surely, EVs are gaining traction. They're getting more and more popular. And to make sure first responders like firefighters know how to handle battery-powered cars and trucks when the worst happens, when a collision occurs, GM is hosting a series of events across the country. Now, to learn more, we are here at Fire Station Number 3 in Troy, Michigan. And see, Ben even shot B-roll of the sign. I knew there's a reason we kept him around. The GM EV First Responders Training Program is designed to give firefighters, law enforcement officers, emergency medical technicians, and even towing operators and salvage yards important information so they can safely interact with crashed electric vehicles. Now, this includes both in-classroom lessons and, perhaps most importantly, hands-on training as well. It is not all PowerPoint. It's a four-hour module altogether. It's an introduction to the beginning, full group, we split the group up into four different groups, four smaller groups, and they rotate around four separate sections. The sections include everything from EV and battery technology to uh, initial response procedures uh, to vehicle extrication and vehicle connectivity, telematics, things like that. We've partnered with Illinois Fire Service Institute. They're nationally accredited. This training is not just being delivered by General Motors and OnStar, but with a very credible industry partner Despite their significant technical differences, electric and combustion-powered vehicles are treated much the same in crashes, though of course there are some important distinctions rescuers need to be aware of. Finish that one, then we'll do and that they go one. in on that side. Uh, the approach is gonna be very similar. Uh, you know, firefighters, EMS personnel, law enforcement, they have a standardized approach to vehicle incidents. We want them to recognize the EVs and we want them to understand that one of the most important things is, is that an EV that is on or in propulsion mode isn't necessarily making any sound. So on an, on an internal combustion engine motor, it's not unusual at all, it's very common, it's probably a, uh, a, a procedure that's done all the time, uh, where they go up and they, they secure the vehicle by putting it in park, shutting it off. We want them to know that that's, that's important with these vehicles as well because they won't have the sense of it running by hearing it run, locking it down, putting it in park, shut the vehicle off, removing the key fob from the vehicle to make it safe. It can't be restarted at that point, it's very important. Beyond making sure a crashed electric vehicle is safely turned off, first responders need to know where various high voltage cables and components are located so they can steer clear of them. Helping with this, automakers color code these parts bright orange so they're easier to see. Cutting into an EV's high voltage electrical system while extracting a driver or passenger is not only dangerous to the rescue team, I mean, they could get electrocuted, doing so could also cause a nasty fire something that's on a lot of drivers' minds when they think of EVs. Battery fires are most safely addressed with copious amounts of water. And that's the exact thing that we put in our rescue documents. Foam and other kind of chemical extinguishers do nothing for a lithium ion battery fire. So copious amounts of water and really applying that at the source of the heat, not on the roof line, not on the hood. Those are all designed to repel rainwater but if you can get the water into the battery compartment or into the passenger compartment to flood, those are things that we're recommending or having first responders take a look at. Clearly showing where dangerous components are located in its electric vehicles, GM has special training documents and it's even developed a first responders app. This piece of software allows rescue workers to pull up the type of EV they'll be dealing with while en route to a crash so they can have a plan in place before arriving. In these situations, every second counts. It runs on an Android operating system, but it presents a three-dimensional visualization of the vehicle with different layers of information. So high voltage components, the battery, the motors, the cabling, where those would be located in the vehicle, as well as you know the size and detail information about the structure so they can plan their cuts or you know, if they need to perform an extrication, they can be as informed. Again, we've committed to doing all this in two-dimensional formats with our rescue documents that are freely posted you know, before a vehicle goes into production. And we're looking at this and other alternative presentations of that information. Yeah, so all of the General Motors uh, electrified products have rescue sheets that are publicly available, they're online. We make sure that all the first responders, right to the point where we have QR codes where they can scan it with their phone and get right to that site. Uh, that's a great resource for, for them to find, not just the public safety cut loop or the first responder cut loop, but also any other information they want to know about the vehicle. 
The GM EV First Responders training program is free, though it's only offered to people that work in public safety. So if you're one of these heroes, you should be able to register right now. GM plans on hosting some 20 to 25 regional events in the United States, so first responders have ample opportunity to participate. Now, for more information, head on over to the website gmevfirstrespondertraining.com or for related documentation, you can hit up the website gmstc.com. In the meantime, I hear there are some cats stuck in trees, so I'm gonna go take care of that and maybe even drive one of these trucks. <laughs>